I've got an 18 pound turkey here and it's been prepped, it's been washed, it's been dried, pat dry and stuff like that. I took out the stuff that was in the, the cavity there, the stuff that was there. I'm not using that. I'm going to save that stuff for later on when I want to do something else. Now, here is that jerk marinade. If you haven't seen the video for that yet, um, I'm going to show you a quick little sort of recap on that right now. As we've done in the past, I think it's important for us to run through the ingredients and I've got my trusty little chopstick here to point things out. And in my humble opinion, no matter which way you go, whether it's personal or whether it is traditional, there are four ingredients a good jerk marinade must possess. One, scallions, green onions, spring onions, whatever you call it, it must be in there. Two, fresh thyme. You can't go without fresh thyme. The dry thyme, yeah, but fresh thyme totally different flavor profile. Scotch bottle peppers, I've got two of them. Obviously you can cut back how much you use, but a good jerk marinade is supposed to be spicy. And number four, most importantly, allspice or pimento or pimento seeds or pimento berries. This is just the powdered form of that. The sort of, the sort of supporting cast. And here's where you can become creative. It is totally up to you. Nobody in trying to tell you what to put in your jerk marinade. We've had the four base ingredients. I've got dark soy sauce, the juice of a lime, the juice of a lemon, brown sugar, some orange juice. I'm telling you, you want to do that. We've got two onions, garlic, black pepper. We've got cinnamon, and normally I would put some ground nutmeg in there, but I'm gonna hold off on the nutmeg for now. I've got some olive oil here. I've got some honey over there. And to finish everything up, to pull everything together, while most people just go with white vinegar, I like using a white, uh, not white wine, sorry, rice vinegar. My apologies, rice been 24 hours since we marinated the turkey and before we put it onto the grill right now I have my grill coming up to 325 degrees but besides that we want to take it out at least an hour before we want to bring it up back to room temperature before we place it on the grill so I put the turkey now on the smoker, 325 degrees. I have it on this sort of wire rack that you're seeing here. That means I can sort of spin it easily. I tucked in the wings. I don't know if you guys can see that. I tucked in the wings below to make it nice and flat. And I have two pans now. One of them over here. This one is with the remaining jerk marinade. I do apologize for the wind. It's very windy out here. That is with the jerk marinade and about a quarter pound of butter. And I also have another pan, and this is to add flavor. This is something very unique to make jerk when you don't have access to um, the pimento wood. And what I have here is some pimento berries and some bay leaves. And I'm just gonna pour boiling water in there and the idea behind that is as this boils, as the cook goes on, this is going to steam and the flavors, believe it or not, the flavors of bay leaf and the pimento berries is going to sort of mimic the sort of flavor, not, you won't get it 100%, but will mimic the flavor of burning pimento wood. 
So we got it set there. I'm just gonna go get my thermometer and put it in there because we're gonna hit for about 165, but I gotta go grab my thermometer. It's been an hour, it's very windy out here. But what we have here now, remember that butter that we added there? I'm gonna use that to baste the turkey with that jerk marinade on there. And if you notice over here, we've got that steam rising. And the steam, the whole idea, remember the idea here was to get the flavor of that pimento berries and the bay leaf onto the chicken as well. But here we got that butter, and I'm gonna hit it maybe every 45 minutes or so, I'm gonna hit him a little basting with that butter jerk marinade combo. Now, if you recall, I said, I put it on this wire rack here so I'm able to spin it around if I wanted to. And it is that easy with the wire rack. I'm just gonna move my probe over. And the wire rack that I have it on here allows me to move it really, really easily. So back on goes there. That little steam action goes back on there. Move that over. I'm gonna baste it on this side as well too. So so far we've got an internal temperature of 153. Remember we aiming for 165. And we've got a lovely color, man. This looks like a beast, man. This looks like a beauty. I'm gonna spin it around one more time and I think at this point is where I'm gonna tent it with foil just because I don't want it to get more dark than this. I'm running out of natural light. But you notice I have it all tented up as I said there. I'll show you guys a little peek. Let's look at the niceness there now. Oi! But you'll see it inside, alright? Well, as you can tell, we hit that internal temperature for 165. I brought it in now. The light is terrible outside. It is winter time, so by 5 p.m. it's already dark. It took five hours, almost five and a half hours to get to, to where you see it there. I'm gonna tent it now and allow it to sort of release back its juices, flex, and get ready to eat some delicious jerk turkey. Let the festivities begin. Dress it up with a little bit of parsley, some thyme, some Cranberries, yeah, I'm on base in Canada, so you know these cranberries have to make the appearance here. But this look at the beautiful color. So let's quickly go through the steps again, how we got here. <laughs> Sup, soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm mean, trying to tell people the email address, them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene? Irene. Basically, we started off with that homemade jerk marinade. I remember once you make that jerk marinade, the video is available. Um, YouTube.com slash Caribbean Pod if you haven't seen it already. We make that jerk marinade. We cleaned our turkey. We rub that jerk marinade in and out as much as we can pile on there we allowed it to remain in the fridge for 24 hours yeah 24 hours then prior to putting it onto the smoker what we did was we took it out of the fridge we brought it up back to room temperature and then we placed it on a wire rack which was made it easier for us to move around on the grill as you guys saw and we put it in there, we put that meat thermometer in there because we wanted to reach an internal temperature of 165. Now keep in mind, the grill was set at 325. If you're doing this in the oven, you can set your oven at 325. You want to do 15 to 20, 10 to 15 minutes per pound. Uh, you know, and, and just get that 165 on the inside. And for that additional flavor, I showed you guys how to create a sort of a base to baste the turkey with. Remember we reserved half of the um, the jerk marinade. We added butter in there. I ended up adding almost half a pound of butter in there. Um, we also made that sort of steam pan. The whole idea was to steam as, uh, or sort of flavor the turkey with that 
pimento berries and and the um, bay leaves and then after it was all done after it was all done you know we basted it every uh, 45 minutes or so after it was all done we brought it inside and yeah we allowed it to rest for another 20 to 30 minutes before we slice it through and that's what that's gonna go happening pretty soon don't forget <clears throat> If you find that it's getting too dark in, in the in the smoker or in your oven, tent it because you don't want to get dark spots and some spots not too iry. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. The ultimate smoked jerk turkey. You guys got to give this one a try, yeah?